everything will end. How fast do you think you can get that thing to go without killing it? Only one way to find out! Venom The Last Dance is the third entry into the Sony Spider-Verse Venom franchise, and while that is a bit of a mouthful, essentially what it means is that Sony has the rights to Spider-Man and most, if not all, of the Spider-Man universe. However, Sony currently has a deal going with Disney, where Disney gets to use the live-action Peter Parker version of Spider-Man almost exclusively in the MCU, while Sony creates all of these different spin-off movies with different Spider-Man characters. Of course, we've seen it before with previous entries into the Venom franchise. We saw it with Jared Leto's Morbius, Michael Keaton's Vulture. Earlier this year, we got the absolute dumpster fire of Madame Web, which... That was such a mess. And then later this year, we're supposed to get Craven, starring Aaron Taylor Johnson as Craven the Hunter. But in this video, I'm talking about the latest entry into the Sony Spider-Verse Venom, The Last Dance. The film is directed by Kelly Marcel, and it once again brings back Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock slash the title character of Venom. In this movie, you have Eddie Brock and Venom who have finally bonded together. That's something that they were going towards in the second film. And by the end of the second film, when they defeated Carnage, which I thought was really ridiculous, they were able to beat Carnage that easy. But when they beat Carnage, they finally became one. And then poof, they were zapped to the MCU. And you found out in No Way Home, it was because all of the different villains of Spider-Man were being drawn into the MCU. And at the end of No Way Home, they sent everybody home and that includes Venom, who gets zapped right back to his universe at the beginning of this film. So he's back in the Sony Spider-Verse Venom franchise universe. Again, it's a mouthful, but he's back there and he finds out that Eddie Brock is a wanted man. Seems easy, he'll just disguise himself as Venom. Well, while all this is going on, you have Noel, the god of the symbiotes, the one who essentially created the symbiotes, or at least that's what this movie made it seem like, and he's been trapped by the different symbiotes before they left their home planet, and the only thing that can get him out of this prison that they currently have him in is something known only as the Codex, and the Codex is something that gets created when a symbiote saves the thing it's bonding with's life. So when it saved Tom Hardy, a Codex was created, and Noel knows there's a Codex out there, so he sends his minions to find the Codex. And the Codex is only something these monsters can see when you have a fully formed Venom. So when Eddie Brock and Venom are Venom, they have these monsters after them because they can see the Codex. And when they're just Eddie Brock, well, the U.S. military, who's currently looking for Eddie Brock, can see him. And so it's a bit of a back and forth cat and mouse game of what's the better evil? Do you want to have to take on all these special forces people? And then to take them on, you have to become Venom. And now you've got these monsters hot in your tail because they're looking for the Codex. And all of that leads to a mega showdown at Area 51. I'm not kidding. But with that said, that's the best synopsis that I can give you. If that sounds like an interesting plot for a film, maybe you're a big Venom franchise fan. Maybe you're just a big Spider-Man fan like me. Well, you should go check this movie out in theaters. It is playing right now. With all that said, let's get into my positives and some of my negatives. For my positives in this film, I really only have one, and that is that it was really fun to see all of the different types of symbiotes at the end of the film. They, they, this movie goes crazy in the last act, and for some people, that's going to be absolutely enough. You get to see symbiotes take out these monsters, symbiotes fight these soldiers, you get to see symbiotes galore. So if you're a big fan of the Venom symbiote and all the different versions of that, well, you will get to see them in this film. I don't feel like that's a spoiler, because I feel like that was in some of the trailers where you saw different symbiotes. Listen, we've seen different versions of Venom in all of the previous Venom films, but this time it's sort of a small scale Avengers version of the symbiotes because all of these symbiotes are working to defeat the monsters who are after the Codex, and I thought that was pretty cool. So my only positive for this movie is in that scene you get to see all the different symbiotes, so many of them, and if this is really the last dance or Sony's last entry into a Venom franchise without it being tied to a Spider-Man, 
Spider-Man film or to a big team-up movie. This might be the last time we see a bunch of different symbiotes, and that was fun to see. But that really is my only positive. I have nothing but negatives left. Let's get into them. First negative I have for this movie is the dialogue is horribly written in some points, and it's horribly delivered at other points. And there were good actors that were supposed to be delivering these lines, like Tom Hardy delivering lines as Eddie Brock. He seemed checked out the entire time. And normally I would give a positive just getting to see Tom Hardy on screen, but he seemed checked out during this movie. Also, he had other moments with Chuyato Ejiofor, who's in the MCU. So I don't understand how he's in this universe. It's all Marvel. It's all different. Like, I understand that you can be a different thing in different universes, but you're still like that person. But in this movie, he's a different person, a general, and you're just like, wait, how are you in both of these universes? It doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm glad he's getting work, but even he delivered some of his lines ridiculously. And again, I think it was the writing at that point because you had some good actors in this film. My next negative was the CGI in this movie, mostly surrounding Venom, which was also disappointing because that's who you're there to see the most. And I would say that arguably this is the worst looking Venom in the entire franchise. While he never got the full Spider-Man across his chest, he did have like the different white lines. And I felt like most of those were missing in several different shots of this movie, especially one where he's dancing with Mrs. Chen. Like it, he just didn't look good at all. And I know that CGI has been sort of a touchy issue lately. People are overworked right now, but it really doesn't look good until that final act. The final act is where it seems like they spent the most of their budget on the CGI. I would not be surprised if that came out later, but all the CGI leading up to that just looked like garbage. My next negative is a very disappointing one, and that is that the comedy just didn't land for me this time around. In the first two entries, that's one thing that I could really put in my positives was how funny the relationship was between Eddie Brock and Venom. And I don't know if it's because they're on the same page now, so they're not bickering as much with each other, but the comedy just wasn't there. And it wasn't just between Eddie Brock and Venom, although that was pretty noticeable that the comedy wasn't there with them. It was throughout the rest of the film. I would have moments where I'd be like, huh, that's kind of funny, but that was it. There was no laugh out loud moments. And I feel like this character or this Venom franchise has been built to deliver some really good laughs while it's giving you some cool action between Venom and whatever villain he's going up against. But this time around, I just didn't feel it. I wasn't laughing. I'd say maybe 10% of the jokes total landed for me. My next negative is that there's way too many side plots in this film. And that's a negative that can happen pretty easily when they're trying to tie up a franchise. And I try to stay away from that negative because I'm like, okay, well, wait a minute. They wanted to answer questions from the first movie, or maybe they've got characters that have been with us since the first movie and they want to give them a nice happy ending as well. But instead of that, you get all of these new characters introduced to you and some old characters introduced to you as well and they have to give all of them a full arc in this film because this is the end of the Tom Hardy version of Eddie Brock and Venom or at least that's what it's being billed as now I don't know if they're gonna back a dump truck of money up to Tom Hardy's house and he's gonna come back as Eddie Brock and Venom in the future but in this movie they make it very clear this is Tom Hardy's exit and so because of that they've got to also wrap up everything else that they start in this movie and other things things that have been from previous franchises. Like you get a full dance scene between Venom and Mrs. Chen because apparently their relationship is that solid that they need to have a dance in this movie. And it's really silly. They play it for a laugh, but again, the laugh didn't work for me and it just felt like another thing. And they were like, oh, we got to get this done. We got to get this in there because we're not going to have another Mrs. Chen moment in the future. And some of the newer things that they added into this film is you had a general played by Chuito Ejiofor. Again, they never really addressed the fact that we've seen him in the MCU so many times and in the Sonyverse which is supposed to be adjacent to the MCU he's a completely different character then you've got a sympathetic doctor in this film who feels bad for the symbiotes that have been captured and brought to Area 51 then you've got a family of people who are just trying to visit Area 51 and see if aliens do exist and so you've got their whole story and they spend so much time with them and some of their stuff is played for laughs Again, jokes weren't landing for me, so because those jokes didn't land, it just felt like another created side quest for a film that didn't need it. Not to mention, 
the biggest new side quest that's put into this film is Null, and if Null is being set up as the big bad Thanos type villain for this universe, they created his story in this movie when you've never heard of Null before in the previous two Venom franchise movies, and now we get Noel, this big bad, who gets a few big chunks of this movie and they never really do anything with his character. It's like, okay, we'll probably see him in the future. He'll eventually find a way to get out. He'll get a codex from something else and he will be released on the Sony-verse. And, and because of all of that, all of those things I just talked about, it's way too many side quests, way too many extra characters, and just feels over bloated for a movie that's supposed to be a send-off to Tom Hardy. And my final negative for this movie is something that irritated me more than anything else, and that is that I'm here to see Venom, not Eddie Brock. Now here's the thing, I understand that you've got Eddie Brock and Venom, they are one, so you're gonna see a little bit of both of them, I completely understand that. However, the movie's titled Venom, The Last Dance, not Eddie Brock, The Last Dance. I don't know if this was a Tom Hardy contract thing where he had to be seen for more of the movie. I know as movies go on, actors wanna be seen more and more, that's why you see Robert Downey Jr.'s face inside the helmet a lot more than you see Iron Man when you go through that franchise. It's just something that actors want. So that could have been it. Tom Hardy might have said, no, I want to be seen a lot more. It might have been in his contract. It could have been CGI. There's a possibility that the CGI department just wasn't going to get things together. So they wrote the story so they could have minimal CGI in the front half of the film. And then towards the back half, you'd have the big explosions and all the venom. And you do see quite a bit of venom in that last act. But throughout the film, you see so much of Tom Hardy's face because they built this story where venom can't come out or the monsters will see him. And so you don't don't get a lot of venom throughout most of this movie. Again, the end has a big explosion scene where you get a lot of venom, but it's just not a lot to, in the entirety of the entire film, and I wanted more venom, and that bothers me because I'm a huge venom fan. And since I was a kid, I loved watching Spider-Man versus Venom in old cartoons. It was awesome. I've got so many venom shirts. I wear them on this channel all the time, including the shirt that I currently have on, which is venom right here. I got it at my local AMC. That was the coolest thing about my trip to the theater was finding this shirt. I'm not even kidding. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that I just want to see more Venom. And if it's a CGI issue, then you need to budget better. And maybe that's what they're doing by getting rid of Tom Hardy. I don't know, but it bothered me. But overall, is this the worst movie of the year? Absolutely not. This is not the worst movie of the entire year, even though I'm giving it such a negative review. It's not even the worst superhero movie of the year, because remember, Madam Web does exist, and it was released in 2024. So would I recommend this movie to people? I would say if you're a hardcore Venom fan, and you're just there to watch things explode, then you'll enjoy at least the back half of this film. So go check it out in theaters. Otherwise, I would say wait for this movie on stream. I mean, it's not really worth your time. They very much so exit Tom Hardy from this franchise, so I don't know where they're going to go with the character of Venom, and I'll be honest with you, I don't think Sony knows. After seeing Madam Web and this, I don't even have much faith in the Aaron Taylor Johnson-led Craven film at the end of this year. But those are just my opinions because that's my review for Venom, The Last Dance. Guys, if you had a chance to see this film yet, if you have, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know if you enjoyed the movie. Maybe we agree or disagree. Maybe you found a lot more things to enjoy about this film. Maybe I'm just getting old. I don't know. But with that said, if you like this video and you want to watch more, don't forget to hit the like button because it helps the video, helps the channel, and helps me right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. All right, guys, we get to the end of Venom, The Last Dance Review. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making this video. If you like this content and you want to check out other content on my channel, well, I've got all of my 2024 best and worst right there, and I've got all of my 2024 movie reviews right there.